Raven Darkholm, Earth-616 Little is known about the origins of the shape-shifting mutant terrorist known as Mystique, the mutant name adopted by Raven Darkholm which itself is an assumed name. As a consulting detective, her services were enlisted by Irene Adler, a mutant clairvoyant who had written confusing passages concerning the future of mutant kind that needed to be deciphered. In their quest, Darkholm became Mystique, while Adler became Destiny. The more they attempted to control the future the more they failed, a struggle that has made an angry Mystique embrace extremist solutions to achieve her objectives. Alongside her wife Destiny, Mystique reformed the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants to assassinate anti-mutant politician Senator Robert Kelly, an attack that was prevented by the X-Men. As a master deceiver and infiltrator, Mystique made her way inside mutant-related organizations, such as becoming the leader of Freedom Force and joining X-Factor, the Marauders, and even the X-Men. During Mystique's trajectory, the death of Destiny had the most tragic impact in her life. Seen as a treacherous ally, Mystique has proven her relevance for the fate of mutant kind with her actions aimed at shaping its future by forging her foster daughter Rogue into a significant mutant superheroine, eliminating Mr. Sinister, and building a mutant-ruled criminal empire on the island of Madripoor. As Professor Xavier established a mutant nation-state on the island of Krakoa, Mystique has been granted a seat on the Krakoan government, the Quiet Council, in an attempt to give all factions of mutant kind some level of representation. However, once again Destiny's predictions would influence Mystique's actions, as she had knowledge about the rise of Krakoa, something that incited Mystique to work against Xavier's flawed plans. Early Life Little is known for certain about Mystique's early life. Her shape-shifting powers grant her a lifespan far beyond that of a normal human. It is known that her powers first manifested when she was 12 years old, and that she had to fight just to survive. Destiny Her earliest meeting with Irene Adler, an Austrian mutant, with precognitive powers occurred at the end of the 19th century. She was most accurate in predicting near-future events concerning her present environment. However, during a period of 12 months in her adolescence, Irene had produced 13 volumes of prophecies concerning the late 20th and early 21st centuries. When that period ended, Irene was left physically blind and haunted by disturbing images of uncertain meaning. While known as Eric Raven she enlisted her services in pursuit of two goals, the deciphering of her recorded prophecies and a mission to prevent the most terrifying of them from ever being fulfilled. The two women soon became lifelong friends and lovers, but they both discovered that their set goals were difficult to achieve. Their abilities easily allowed them to achieve personal success, but to shape the future proved to be next to impossible as it would require extensive social engineering. Sherlock Holmes In 1895, Raven took up the identity of consulting detective Sherlock Holmes operating out 221B Baker Street in London working with her long-term partner Irene Adler. The two were hired to investigate a number of murders believing them to have been inspired by Jack the Ripper. They investigated Milbury House the home of Dr. Nathaniel Essex who was discovered at the scene naked and battered but with no memory of the attack. Raven went undercover as a prostitute hoping to lure out the attacker. On that night, they found the true attacker Mr. Sinister, who escaped across the rooftops. They followed him back to Dr. Essex's home, they discovered him turning back into the frail doctor. They arrested him and sent him away to Bedlam to be detained and treated. However, overnight, they learned that he was murdered. Their adventures inspired author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, creating the literary legend of Sherlock Holmes. First Betrayals in 1921, Raven found herself in the Mexican Sonoran Desert about to be executed by a firing squad, her blue skin had led the locals to believe she was a witch. While she was blindfolded and tied to a post, she noticed a man tied up beside her. When she asked if he was a murderer, he answered, worse, a horse thief. Raven managed to untie herself just before the firing squad shot and watched as the man was riddled with bullets. However, he managed to somehow survive and kill the guards. After they both escaped, Raven was surprised that he was still alive and asked how he knew she would be able to free herself and escape. He responded, I didn't, and when she asked where he was going to next, he said the nearest bar. Raven introduced herself to the man who said his name was Logan, after which she told him that she had a group of friends in Kansas City that he would probably like to meet. Once in Kansas City, Raven told Logan about her group, who scammed local people. After meeting Raven's crew and saving one of them from an angry customer that was scammed, Raven informed Logan that she, along with her crew, were planning a bank heist and she wanted him to take part in it. When Logan expressed his reluctance to get attached to people, Raven told him that she knew it was hard to trust people, but that they could be a family and to trust her. They kissed and Logan decided to help her. However, Raven betrayed Logan and her friends by alerting the police, leaving her crew to take the fall for the heist while she escaped with the stolen money. She encountered Logan in a train later and he questioned her about this. Raven tells Logan that each one of them should just start a new life. Once Logan turns his back, she kicks him out of the train. 
World War II. They encountered Shadowcat and Rachel Summers, who had time-traveled from the future and sought to prevent a plot by Nazi agents Baron Wolfgang von Strucker and Geist slash Ghost, a member of Nazi intelligence, and their ally Amal Farouk, the Shadow King. The three had conspired to question the rights of the British monarch to the throne and then to replace him with Oswald Mosley of the British Union of Fascists, a likely ally for Nazi Germany. Irene and Raven contacted their old acquaintance, Logan, to help the time travelers. Irene and Raven advised Shadowcat and Logan against proceeding in their contemplated assassination of Adolf Hitler and other prominent leaders and officials of the Nazi party. Raven was laconic in only stating, all of us have learned to kill, Logan, but more importantly, we have learned not to kill and to know the difference. At some point, Raven reportedly lost contact with Irene. She managed to locate her working as an archivist in the Alamogordo Nuclear Research Facilities in New Mexico. Raven was uncertain of Irene's motives but apparently trusted her enough not to press for answers. A mother. Raven eventually met Victor Creed, the man known as Sabretooth. At the time, she used the identity of deceased German secret agent Lenny Zauber. Both Lenny and Victor had been assigned with the assassination of a scientist in East Berlin. Raven completed the mission in place of Lenny. After the mission, she and Victor took refuge in safe house for a few days. They became lovers, but she soon faked her death in order to leave him. The result of this short-lived affair was the birth of Graydon Creed, her earliest known child. Mystique was seemingly uninterested in motherhood and made arrangements for Graydon from afar. Graydon spent most of his childhood in a boarding school. Raven kept track of his activities until he reached adolescence. Graydon was the son of two mutants and as a result likely to be a mutant himself. However, he proved to be no more than an ordinary human and never manifested mutant powers. Raven was disappointed and soon abandoned him. Graydon grew to hate his parents and eventually extended his hatred towards all mutants. He later became leader to the mutant-hating organization Friends of Humanity and then a politician. Graydon, at the height of his political ascension was assassinated by an unknown shooter. The shooter was later revealed to be a time-traveling version of Mystique, as part of a convoluted time paradox involving Jean Grey, Iceman, Toad, and Juggernaut. At some point, Mystique disguised herself as an ordinary human and married Baron Christian Wagner, an affluent member of German nobility. He would prove to be a loving husband, but rather disappointing as a lover. His infertility added to their marital problems. Raven started using her shape-shifting powers to secretly have sexual encounters with others. She particularly seemed to seek men who somewhat resembled Victor Creed. She was apparently both seeking sexual satisfaction and attempting to conceive another child. Another fellow mutant eventually seduced her. He called himself Azazel and stated he was the ruler of an island nation off the coast of Bermuda, La Isla de Demonas, the island of demons. He was apparently a fellow shapeshifter and also had the powers of teleportation. He was later revealed to also have the power of immortality and to be the father of an ancient race of mutants known as the Niafem, active since at least 900 BC. His natural form was that of a young man with black hair, yellow eyes, red skin and a pointed tail. He later claimed to have been posing as a demon and to have used many aliases, because I am Azazel, Semihaza, Duma, Kariel, Mastima, Belayar, Gadriel and Beelzebub. And most commonly called Satan. Many of these aliases have also been claimed by several notable demons of the Marvel Universe. Raven soon became pregnant. Her husband became suspicious and his father suggested a blood test to verify if the child was his. Mystique used a dagger to slay the Baron and then buried him. When she gave birth her concentration on her human form was lost and her natural blue body was revealed. Her child was a young boy with black hair, yellow eyes, blue skin and a pointed tail. The locals considered both the mother and the child to be demons and attempted to slay them. Mystique managed to escape but abandoned her second known son. He was found and raised by Romani sorceress Margali Zardos. He grew up to become Nightcrawler of the X-Men, inheriting his mother's blue skin and his father's powers of teleportation. Mystique would later become adoptive mother to a young girl named Anna Marie, who had run away from her home in rural Caldecott County, Mississippi. The girl was living alone in a wooded area, brandishing a shotgun and trusting no one when Mystique found her. Destiny foresaw that Rogue would be important to them and Mystique sought her out, gained her trust and took her in. She and Destiny would raise the girl over approximately a decade and Mystique would grow to be very protective of her. While Rogue was under her care, she maintained the false identity of Mallory Brickman, the wife of US Senator Ralph Brickman. It is unknown whether a real Mallory Brickman ever existed and was replaced, but the guys had an adopted daughter, Gloria. 
Mystique had concealed her superhuman powers and criminal intentions so well over the years that, as Raven Darkholm, she was able to rise rapidly through the United States Civil Service to the trusted position of Deputy Director of the DARPA in the United States Department of Defense, giving her access to military secrets and advanced weaponry, both of which she used for her own criminal and subversive purposes. Brotherhood of Mutants Mystique organized the third incarnation of the Brotherhood of Mutants, which originally consisted of herself, Avalanche, The Blob, Destiny, and Pyro. Mystique named her group after the original Brotherhood of Mutants, an organization founded by Magneto. The third incarnation of the Brotherhood first became known when it attempted to intimidate the public by assassinating Senator Robert Kelly, who was investigating what he perceived as the possible danger posed by the existence of superhuman beings, like mutants. The X-Men thwarted the assassination attempt. Anna Marie was trained by Mystique and eventually joined her Brotherhood team as Rogue. Her mutant power was the ability to absorb the psyche, memories, personality, strengths and any skills or powers of whoever she touched. Rogue proved to be a powerful member of the team. She went on many missions with the Brotherhood and with her help the team was almost able to defeat the Avengers. On a mission with the Avengers, Rogue fought Carol Danvers, better known as the superheroine named Ms. Marvel. Rogue tried stealing Carol's powers, but Carol fought too hard and Rogue ended up permanently absorbing Carol's memories and powers, while Carol was left an empty shell. Professor Xavier later restored Carol's memories, but not the emotions that went with them. Rogue, meanwhile, felt like she was losing her mind, grappling with Danvers' psyche and at times not knowing which memories were really hers. Feeling like she was in danger of losing control of herself, Rogue ran away from home and sought help from the X-Men, hoping that Professor X would be able to treat her. While the other X-Men were very hesitant of accepting their former enemy at first, Xavier welcomed her and gave her a spot on the team. Worried that Rogue had left because Xavier had brainwashed her, Mystique went to rescue her leading an attack on the X-Men. Rogue stopped her, saying how she had left of her own free will. Mystique was doubtful and hurt, but Rogue ultimately convinced her by saying that Xavier was probably the only person who could help with her powers and give her a chance at a normal life, as she feared the absorbed personality of Carol Danvers would otherwise drive her insane. Mystique grudgingly agreed and let Rogue stay with the X-Men. Though she would remain close to Rogue, coming to help her at times, Mystique came to resent Xavier. Freedom Force Anti-mutant sentiment among normal human beings had greatly increased, and the federal government launched its own covert anti-mutant program, Project Wadiwake. Believing that the times had become too dangerous for the Brotherhood to continue its criminal activities, Mystique went to Dr. Valerie Cooper's special assistant to the head of the National Security Council and offered the Brotherhood's services to the government. Cooper agreed to convey the offer to the president on the condition that the Brotherhood pass a test she imposed, the capture of Magneto. The Brotherhood, now renamed Freedom Force, succeeded in bringing Magneto to the authorities only because he voluntarily surrendered to them and soon afterwards officially entered the government's employ. In return for entering the government's employ as Freedom Force's leader, Mystique received a presidential pardon for all criminal charges against her, but the pardon would be revoked if any member of Freedom Force was found committing a crime. During her time with Freedom Force Mystique faced many new opponents such as the Grip, Avengers West Coast, and several other foes. During this stint, her team was sent to Muir Island and were confronted by the Reavers, who killed her teammate Stonewall. During the battle, she charged Forge with the duty of protecting Destiny. Forge managed to protect her until she convinced him that Mystique needed more help. After Forge left to help Mystique, Destiny was slain by a mind-controlled legion. After the battle with the Reavers, Mystique discovered Destiny dead and swore vengeance on Forge for her death. She was then visited by a future version of herself and decided to take some time off to mourn the death of Destiny. During her time off she went on a cruise and scattered Destiny's ashes into the ocean. With Destiny dead, a tired and depressed Mystique was marked for death by the villainous Shadow King. The Shadow King saw Mystique as a threat to his plans of using the FBI to track down Storm and used his powers to enslave Raven's government handler Val Cooper and ordered her to kill Raven. Val broke free at the last minute and shot herself, allowing Raven to contact Nick Fury and arrange a desperate endgame to oust the Shadow King. Mystique allowed herself to be brainwashed into thinking she was Val, so that the Shadow King would not suspect that she was alive and rejoined the Shadow King's side. During the Muir Island saga, the Shadow King's final gambit to destroy the X-Men and Professor Xavier, Mystique was given the trigger word rogue that caused her to return to normal and help save Xavier from being murdered by the Shadow King. During this time, Freedom Force's remaining members were sent to Kuwait during the Gulf War. This mission proved to be another disaster, several members were either killed, wounded, or captured, and Freedom Force officially disbanded. Breakdown Mystique's mental condition worsened when she was marked for death by her former Freedom Force teammate, Spiral. Spiral stalked Raven across the globe, further adding to Raven's mental instability. 
She was saved by Wolverine, who took her to the X-Mansion in hope that Xavier could help the wayward mutant. In the end, Raven apparently had a complete breakdown, though later stories implied she was faking it and was taken to Dallas by Forge. While with Forge, Mystique was horrified when she found out that her son Graydon Creed had formed a successful anti-mutant hate group. Shortly afterwards, Graydon hired Sabretooth to kill Mystique, but when Mystique told Sabretooth about their son and he decided to go after Graydon instead. When a top-ranking US general who had ties to Graydon turned up dead, Forge realized that Mystique was to blame as she made her move to kill her son. This led to Rogue and Nightcrawler trying to stop Raven and led to Nightcrawler learning that Mystique was indeed his mother. Raven failed to kill Creed and was presumed dead after saving Nightcrawler from Creed's attempt to murder his newly discovered brother. Attributes Powers Metamorph, Mystique can psionically alter the formation of her biological cells at will. As a result, she can cause herself to look and sound like an exact duplicate of any human, humanoid, or semi-humanoid being of any sex, wearing virtually any kind of clothing. Her control is so exact that she can precisely duplicate another person's retina pattern in her own eyes, finger, palm and skin pore patterns on her own hands and skin, smell to overlap the original being, and vocal cords to match voices to the point of corresponding voice prints. Mystique was once exposed to dangerous levels of radiation in order to save the life of Toad. The process dramatically morphed Mystique's appearance, causing her skin to become reptilian, and boosted her powers so that she could now morph her body into taking certain desired physical traits depending on her situation at the time, note, this reptilian form was quickly discarded, whether it was because of retcon or if she simply shapeshifted back to her previous form remains to be seen. Examples of this new ability included, night vision, wings on her back, talons in her fingers, sharp fang teeth, natural body armor, mermaid-like tail, and she could even compress into a nearly two-dimensional state to glide on air currents, similar to Mr. Fantastic, which she used to survive an explosion. Since her resurrection by the hand, her powers have been enhanced to a higher level than they were before, to the degree that she could fool superhumanly acute senses such as Wolverine's sense of smell, something she couldn't do before her death. Other new facets of these abilities include tentacle generation, animal shifting, and partial liquefaction. Metamorphic adaptation, after her first enhancement, Mystique showed the ability to adapt her body depending on her situation at the time. She was able to camouflage her body to match her surroundings so well as to be invisible, shift her organs into her lower extremities, and mimic the textures of glass or metals when she took on the form of Magneto and his helmet. She could conceal items in shapeshifted pouches inside her body and clearly stated that she was always naked and simply made her skin look and feel like other materials to fool others. Enhanced physical attributes, able to enhance her strength, speed, agility, durability, reflexes, and senses. Accelerated healing, Mystique's nature allows her to repair wounds, regrow limbs and regenerate herself from minor to near-death injuries in a short span of time, much faster than an ordinary human. She is capable of retaining a mimicked form even when drugged or knocked unconscious. Toxin and Disease Resistance, she is capable of quickly developing resistance and immunity to toxins and diseases. Decelerated Aging, Raven's metamorphic powers have staved off the degenerative effects of aging. She has always had this ability even before her enhancement, she is over 100 years old. Psychic Defense, Mystique's nature also provides her with a natural defense against telepathic intrusion. Nick Fury's intel classified her as power level 8, while the O asterisk N asterisk E stated that she was a severe threat. According to Prosh, her comparative mutagenic power register was of 8.3. Abilities Master Martial Artist, Mystique is a highly skilled combatant. Her skills rival those of Black Widow and Captain America. Trained Actress Expert Marksman Multilingual, Mystique has stated that she knows at least 11 languages, besides her presumably native German and English, she has demonstrated fluency in Spanish, Portuguese, French, Farsi, Korean, Swedish, and Czech. Covert Operative, Strategist in Terrorist and Commando Operations Weaknesses Appearance Limitation, originally, it was clearly stated that Mystique's powers were limited to appearances only, she could not assume the powers of the people she morphed into or alter her body to adapt to different situations. Although Mystique's powers were enhanced, Mystique could never duplicate the powers of other superhumans, and she still cannot duplicate the powers of the person she imitates, for example, when she turned herself into a duplicate of Nightcrawler, she did not gain the ability to teleport. However, she can use her powers to mimic the powers of others, such as assuming the form of Sabretooth, and then using her powers to enhance her senses, strength, speed, agility, and of course naturally heal at an accelerated rate. Unchangeable body mass, while she can make herself look exactly like a person who is physically bigger than herself, she will not weigh as much as the real person does. As such, she will be considerably weaker than the true person she copies, as evidenced by her form of an imposter Sabretooth, where her powers were less effective than the genuine Sabretooth. 
Also, the longer she takes a form of someone with greater mass, the greater a strain on her body which could reach a breaking point where she is forced to turn back into her normal self. Since her enhancement, Mystique has stated that her body mass now changes when she does, although the truth as with everything concerning Raven Darkholm, remains shrouded. Schizophrenia, formerly Mystique's shape-changing physiology causes her brain to suffer from constant and subtle shifts in her brain tissue that manifested in the form of schizophrenia. Her personality constantly changed, making her volatile and unpredictable. Psylocke has since stabilized her mind. Paraphernalia. Equipment. She has used experimental weaponry and devices, including a power drainer that disabled Iron Man nanotech capable of fooling Cerebro and related tech. Weapons. Conventional firearms and an energy beam pistol. Various skull-shaped explosives usually carried on her belt. In early appearances, Mystique demonstrated the ability to alter the shape of items stored as skulls on her belt. Transportation. Seen in Wolverines, Mystique's vessel the Changeling was a highly advanced stealth ship capable of cloaking and flying at very high speed. The ship had sophisticated weapons and surveillance systems, with an onboard analysis computer and power-suppressing containment cells. The ship was destroyed and it is currently unknown if it has been replaced. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye-bye.